On today's Power Nation Extra, we're going to give you a little behind the scenes on every engine that we do here. Parts verification is a must whether you're building something mild or wild. We verify that parts are correct and fit properly beforehand on everything that we do here. The procedure we're going to show you today has to do with installing a new camshaft in an old project. Now the first thing we do is verify that the camshaft specs are what the cam card says they are. Now we do that by measuring ourselves. Now with the degree wheel on and true TDC set, here's a look at how to take a couple measurements. First up, we will see where the intake center line falls. That is done by degreeing the cam. We'll take the numbers 50 thousandths before and 50 thousandths after peak lobe lift on the intake side. Then add those two numbers together and divide them by two. The intake center line for this engine is 106 and a half, which is three and a half degrees advanced. Now that the cam is degreed, we're going to compare actual lobe lift to what the cam card says. This can vary a few thousandths from the card, but it's not a big concern. This is checked by simply putting a dial indicator on the push rod and measuring the amount of travel from the lobe's base circle to its peak lift. The card stated 375 thousandths, and we're measuring 375 thousandths, so the card is accurate. Now on to the next measurement, which is lift at the valve. This is done by installing the new rocker arms for mock-up. The indicator is moved to the retainer, and the engine is turned over until peak lift is reached. Lobe lift multiplied by the rocker ratio is the amount of lift at the valve. Changing rocker ratios will increase lift, but be aware this can also cause interference issues depending on your components. Check it carefully. For example, here's the difference between a 1.7 and a 1.6 rocker. It's 37 thousandths. This camshaft's lobe separation angle is 110 degrees. We have it installed at 106 and a half like we mentioned earlier. That makes it three and a half degrees advanced. Here's a quick look at what retarding or advancing the camshaft in your engine will actually do. Retarding the cam lets valve events happen later in regards to the crankshaft position. This allows the engine to make maximum power higher in the RPM range while sacrificing a small amount of lower RPM power and torque. Advancing the cam allows the valve events to happen sooner in regards to crankshaft position, trapping air sooner in the cylinder, allowing maximum power at lower engine speeds. Now obviously there are more things to get checked and measured, but this gives you a little insight on what has to happen before we build an engine.